What's up burritos, carne asada here, and today we're going to be taking a look at Plants vs. Zombies Heroes. I find this game to be akin to, I'd say, Legends of Elder Scrolls, Hearthstone, and a lot of the other Android and iOS card games. Uh, I've been enjoying it so far. I played a little bit, I got through the tutorial so that we didn't have to follow all those instructions and everything, and I can just kind of give you a rundown of the game as it is. So you're able to play as either plant heroes or zombie heroes. Now, the heroes act just like the heroes do in Hearthstone, where they have their own superpowers, and they have their own health, and that's how you determine the end result of a match. Now, the difference that they have is that instead of having abilities that can only be used once per turn, you can actually bank abilities. And if you have enough of the sun for the plants, or the brains for the zombies, you can use more than one hero ability per turn. Not usually recommended, but we'll go ahead and show you in a match. So we're going to start out with the plant missions. So let's go ahead and get into this right here, and let's start with the Green Shadow, which is the first hero you get, which is a Hero Pea Shooter. Herbicide Squad. And I, I do like the little like pop culture references that they have in it as well. Uh, they have a really nice comic style that they do in between missions. So right here, it's, this, uh, it's explaining to us that we're going to be fighting the uh, a subject called Infinity who is a zombie who can replicate themselves as their hero power. Or imp affinity, my bad. Uh, you do have high ground and water lanes, and water lanes can only be filled by amphibious creatures. So zombies start first. And each hero has their own unique fighting style and their unique type and their unique cards. Again, very akin to Legends of Elder Scrolls and Hearthstone. So we get to play now, but it looks like we don't have any cards that we can really play because this hero ability here, Whirlwind, which will bounce a random zombie. Bouncing means that it moves it back to the opponent's hand. We can't use it if they have nothing on the field. So let's go ahead and skip our turn. Now zombie tricks. After we have played our cards, zombies have an ability to use their superpowers and halt what we do. There we see an amphibious zombie, which does make it a little bit difficult for us, potentially. Now, I can choose to do one of two things. I can either play a 1-1 card here, which would be the Weenie Beanie. Now, this is a basic common card, doesn't do a whole lot. If we play this, we would not be able to play it in the water lane. The problem with that is that that would now leave a 3-1 hitting us for 3 damage. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use Whirlwind, and I'm going to bounce that right back into his hand. That's going to basically give me an extra turn to stock up some more points and still actually be able to play my Weenie Beanie. They didn't have a trick, so I was able to hit them for one damage. Now as you saw, that shield started to fill up. When the shield fills up completely, which can be random between 1, 2, and 3 anytime anybody takes damage, either myself or the enemy. When that happens, they get a free hero ability when one of the shields gets used. You're allowed up to three free hero abilities from each full shield, and when the shield fills up, you block an attack. That can be very useful. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to put this 3-2 over here in Amphibious. That's going to block the three damage that's coming at us, but we're still going to take one damage this turn. Now we got three to fill up our shield, which means that we actually only need five more. The zombies get to play this turn. Now I'm going to save this. Now the Torchwood, they do have some health. Three health. However, peas behind it get plus two because it sets the peas on fire. So I'm actually going to hold out and not use that because I have the potential to go ahead and drop this tri-headed pea shooter which can shoot across three lanes. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and drop this. This is a 1-2, which means it can absorb the attack damage of that, cre or that zombie across the field, and I'll still be able to take it out. I'll also go ahead and use this, which allows me to draw two new cards, just to go ahead and add them to my hand. Now that my turn is done, I'll go ahead and complete and see if they have any tricks to use. That zombie is going to get 2-1 and got moved. They moved it again, and now it has 3-1. See, so using zombie tricks and stacking up either your brains or your sun can make quite a difference in a battle. Now, what I can choose to do is I can either play a 5 card, which might not be a horrible idea. 
The reason I think that I might want to play one of these, the Smoosh Rooms, is that he may have a trick that causes it to instantly kill something with four or above health. It would be best to get him to go ahead and use that now, because he may try to take that out on my three shooter. So I'll go ahead and eat the three damage and hit him for what I can, which has actually gotten him down to ten. So now it's my turn to play. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to play the Gatling Shooter and the torch in front of him. Now the cool thing about the Gatling Shooters is that after combat it does a bonus attack. So you have the potential to kill the thing in front of you and then proceed to hit for a bonus attack. Now I'm only going to be able to do two damage because when this attacks it's going to hit my Torchwood first and it's going to kill it. But it does mean my pea shooter will still get a chance to attack again. I should have enough damage on the board that by next turn I should be able to finish this round. See, there's a zombie trick, which has now gone ahead and taken out my pea shooter. That zombie will take out my torchwood. And oh, it looks like he gets to two, make two, two ones of himself. So he's taken out my Weenie Beanie, but I've still been able to hit him for 5 damage. And I got an ability. My ability gives me plus 2 attack and plus 2 health. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drop it on the Smoosh Room. And I'm not even done yet. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to give this plant 2-2, two -two, as well as another 2-2. Two -two. That puts him at a 5-6, so I ha currently have 2-1, 5-6, 2-1, and 7-6. That puts more than enough damage to end the match on the board. And we have completed this match. Now, at the end of a match, typically, you'll earn points, and you'll earn gems. Now what's cool about the gems... Oh, that's right! Uh, after your first match that you play, you unlock a new hero class. So let's see who we got. So I can either choose Solar Flare, who is a Kabloom, which is mostly explosive and swarming damage, and Solar, which is a lot of healing and... Um, kind of just support. Then you have Kabloom and Guardian. Guardian is mostly defense and high health cards. I'm gonna go ahead and pick Solar Flare. So I have unlocked 20 new plants to go ahead and use, or 40 new plants to go ahead and use with Solar Flare. Alright, so I got some new hero quests. Now, so I can tap the hero, and I can switch to Solar Flare. Now, we have 100 coins. I, I don't feel like raiding you right now. I'm kind of raiding you already. We can go down into packs, and we can purchase a premium pack, which is a set of six premium set cards and at least one rare, super rare, legendary, or a new hero. So let's go ahead and buy it. Let's see what we got. So we got a few uncommons, which these packs will include plants and zombies. Oh, would you look at that? So we got the Wizard Gargantar. All Gargantars have Bullseye, and it does quite a bit of damage. We also got the Brainana. They're amphibious, and when played, the zombie hero loses all of their brains. This is very, very nice in late game, because as you can see, for six brains, they can go ahead and cast that Gargantar. However, if I play the Brainana, before they get a chance to play theirs, or before they get a chance 
to play their tricks, it means that they may have gotten that out, or they may have gotten something small out, but they're not going to be able to do any tricks on me. So it's good to have that when you already have a lot of high damage on the field. So we're going to go ahead and collect those cards. Now you can go ahead and you can buy more gems if you so choose, uh, or you can go ahead and use the coins that you get through just completing basic matches, or through um, or through battle. Battle is the PvP section. Uh, I haven't gotten into that yet. I may down the road get into that. If you want me to take a look at the PvP section, I'll be more than happy to. Just go ahead and leave a comment down below. So this has been my first look review of Plants vs. Zombies Heroes. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you did, please leave a like and comment. Tell me if you want to see more of this. Otherwise, I've been Karn, and I will see you in the next video. Adios!